All right, I hopped into the client the other day just to see what changes they made and I wanted to see if it performed any better and got a quick game with Damia Sage of Stone. I purposefully played with a deck that I didn't want to record with because it's not very popular and look who decides to rear his ugly head. It's Leovold, Emissary of Trest. So let's go through the replay function and get this game underway. Like I say, I didn't record this game because... Darmia Sage of Stone doesn't tend to be very popular. We go in for a Birds of Paradise on turn one. And then Leovold just gets down a second land and I imagine is holding up counter magic. So we do exactly the same holding up the Arcane Denial because I think they're going to go in for Leovold here. And I was right in that assumption so we get Arcane Denial onto Leovold. Our opponent will draw a couple of cards with that. And we will draw one at the beginning of our next upkeep. And then with the Birds of Paradise we decide to Mystical Tutor in for a Mana Drain. So that when Leovold does come down again we'll be able to counter it once more. We draw into the Mana Drain from the Arcane Denial. And then we draw our card for the turn. And like I said our opponent draws a couple of cards. Now, I debate whether to hold up the Mana Drain for an Ancient Tomb or Mana Crypt, land into Sol Ring, something like that. But decide to just go for Cultivate here. Taking advantage of what is hopefully a turn off for Leovold. And going for a little bit of ramp. And yep, yeah, they do get down a Jace the Mind Sculptor, but we would have saved the Mana Drain for Leovold anyway, I think. Going straight into a Brainstorm. And then we draw into Acidic Slime here. And I do debate whether to go for Acidic Slime onto the Command Tower to take them even further away from Leovold. But instead just decide to ramp a little bit more with the Wood Elves. And this also shows our opponent that we could have a 3 mana counter spell as well. So it's just more for them to think about. Jace going for another Brainstorm. And let me just go over the commanders quickly actually for anyone who doesn't know. Damia Sage of Stone, 7 mana in Sultai for a 4-4 Death Touch. You skip your draw step. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have fewer than 7 cards, then you draw until you have 7. Leovald, Emissary of Trest, is 3 mana in Sultai for a 3-3. Each opponent can't draw more than 1 card each turn. And whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Mainly Leovold wants to come down and then start getting wheels off. Because they'll draw a lot of cards and have us draw none. And we'll discard our hand in the process. Bajuka Bog, exiling our graveyard. Don't think we really care about that. And there's that Mana Crypt, so we were lucky there that they didn't draw into that a turn sooner. Because they would have got a Leovold past us. But they go for the Leovold again anyway. They know we have Mana Drain so they're clearly just trying to get it out of our hand. They do have the mana to recast Leovold again next turn. So we need to see if we can do something about that. Which is exactly what we concentrate on this turn. Acidic Slime comes down. And that goes after that Command Tower to take them off a blue mana. And then it's Unravel the Aether to shuffle the Mana Crypt away. And we might as well get down Jace Vryn's Prodigy to knock Summoning Sickness off that as soon as possible. And then Wood Elves just goes in at Jace. That gives them one less Unsummon to go for, but they go for the Brainstorm anyway. So now they are a couple of mana away from their Leovold. Baleful Strix comes down. And that is a problem because we want to get some damage in on Jace the Mind Sculptor. But we will have to trade a creature away in order to do that now. And then Grim Flayer is another blocker so we actually can't get through to Jace as the board stands now. Draw into Runescar Demon and decide to loot with the Jace Vryn's Prodigy. And I think we, yeah, we discard the Jingataxius here. Play the Swamp. And then again deliberate between Runescar Demon and Darmia. I plump for Darmia here I think. Yep. So hopefully 
we will have Darmia survive until our next turn and refill our hand. They went for a mental note at the end of the turn there. And then an unsummon with Jace onto Darmia. Makes Jace more fragile. But it is worth getting Darmia out of play. A Mana Vault and tap immediately. They have six cards left in hand. Thanks to all these brainstorms. And down comes a Grave Titan. Nice promo version of Grave Titan. And the Grim Flayer now has the plus two plus two from Delirium. Need four or more card types in your graveyard to get that. And whenever this deals combat damage to a player, you mill three. And whenever this deals combat damage to a player, put any number of cards from the top three of your library into your graveyard. And the rest stay on top. It does have Trample, so there's not a whole lot of point in us blocking here. Because we do want to save the Death Touch Acidic Slime for that Grave Titan if it swings in. They plump for putting nothing into the graveyard, so clearly they like the top three cards of the library. We'll get down the Reliquary Tower because we can draw a lot of cards in this deck. And then we decide to discard Urborg, I think. Yes, we do. And then just going for Darmia again. And hopefully she'll stick around this time. Worst case scenario, they decide to bounce her again with Jace. Opt is Scry and Draw at instant speed. And Jace the Mind Sculptor going for the 57th Brainstorm of the game. And swinging in with the Zombies and the Grim Flayer. And chumping a zombie with the Wood Elves. Killing off a zombie with Darmia. And the Grim Flayer can come through. And we'll see if they mill anything this time. They still don't want to put anything in the graveyard with the Grim Flayer. And down comes a Progenitor Mimic on the Grave Titan. Couldn't think of a much better target for a Progenitor Mimic. They are going to get a hell of a lot of permanents into play with that. The Progenitor Mimic will copy itself again at the beginning of their next upkeep, which gives them another Grave Titan. But luckily for us, Darmia survives, so we will refill our hand and get down a land. The last card we drew was a land, luckily, so we can still keep up our land drops. Looting with Jace again, and I can't remember what we discard. I think it might be Ristic Study, actually. Yeah, and that flips over Jace into his Planeswalker form. And we give the Progenitor Mimic minus two to its attack until the next turn. Now I think I was trying to work out whether I could Gilded Lotus into Runescar Demon. I don't think we could whilst holding up Counter Magic. So it might just be Runescar Demon here. I can't remember. Yes, it is. And we go for Decree of Pain. Like I said, we can draw a lot of cards in this deck. And Decree of Pain is one means of doing that. Destroy all creatures, they can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. And then we're just holding up the counter spell as well. Another copy of Grave Titan comes down thanks to that Progenitor Mimic. And the Mana Vault will ping our opponent unless they want to put four mana into it, which I don't think they do. And Sol Ring for some more mana. And trying with the Leovold again, we decide to let it go because they don't have the mana for a wheel, and that's just a creature that's going to get wrapped up in this Decree of Pain anyway. We won't draw a card from the Commanders going back to the Command Zone, but certainly not going to waste Counter Magic right before a board wipe. And we can afford Decree of Pain and countering a Force of Will with the, uh, with the Counter Spell. So we decide to allow Leovold to enter there. Going in with the Grave Titan, probably just trying to get rid of Acidic Slime here, which they managed to do. We're just going to save ourselves 6 life here and block. Like I said, we're going for Decree of Pain next turn anyway. And now that Leovold's out, Darmia will not allow us to draw more than one card for the turn. So we just get into a Force of Will. I mean, if we're going to draw into one card, that's a hell of a card to get into. We go for the Gilded Lotus. Tap it immediately for black mana. And then and then go for the Decree of Pain. We don't have two blue mana held up now, but 
we do have the Force of Will. We can exile Counterspell from our hand for a free Counterspell with Force of Will. And I thought it'd be better to get down three mana for the rest of the game, hopefully. Uh, better to do that than hold up Counterspell as a hard cast. Plus we'll have much more blue cards to exile with Force of Will, as you can see here, because we have drawn into a bunch of cards thanks to that Decree of Pain. Ticking up Jace again. And what's the limit break on that? I forget. You get an emblem whenever you cast a spell. Target opponent mills 5. And they have 70 cards left in library, so that's not too many spells. Uh, yeah, that's 14 spells, isn't it? Which shouldn't be too difficult for us with a hand of this size. And then just to make use of the mana, decide to exile our opponent's graveyard before they make use of it during their turn. And we do put a black into the now spell bomb to draw a card. And a Thrag Tusk for our opponent. And I start to frantically look through my hand to see what I can do about a Thrag Tusk. And notice that we have Tamiyo the Moon Sage to tap that down. Because I really want to get rid of this Jace the Mind Sculptor. And we will be able to do that next turn thanks to the Lightning Greaves. We just go in for a Golgari Signet, and obviously we're not going to counter that. Just ticking up Jace and minusing down the Thrag Tusk, because, well, we might as well. Decide to get down a Lotus Cobra, because we do have a Fetch in the hand in Wooded Foothills. So that will get us a couple of Landfall triggers. And Landfall gives us mana with the Lotus Cobra. Lightning Greaves comes down. Then I think it's Tamio here just to tap down that Thrag Tusk. And that's exactly what we do. We freeze the Thrag Tusk, put the Greaves onto the Lotus Cobra, and cast a Rex Sage on the Sol Ring, I think. Then swinging in at Jace, finally getting rid of that. That has been a really, really good card draw engine for our opponent, that Jace the Mind Sculptor. But finally getting rid of it on turn 10. And here. I see that our opponent is tapping down mana with the Mana Vault on the stack during their upkeep, so that looks hopeful. And they clearly have something in their hand that they want to go for next turn. Maybe it's Leovald straight into a wheel again. I forget how much Leovald costs now. I think it's around 11. How much mana do they have? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, if they make a land drop, they can afford Leovald, but they're nowhere near getting a wheel down. We crack the Wooded Foothills at the end of the turn and go for a tapped breeding pool. That will add mana to our mana pool. And then with that we decide to go for the Cross and Grip onto the Mana Vault. They can't counter that even if they're holding up counter magic. Thanks to Split Second. And with that they can't recast their commander. They don't like the 8 cards that are in their hand. So they decide to call it a day, which is fair enough. Uh, this whole praying on Leovold segment is just a running joke for the channel. It's nothing to do with uh, picking on my opponent or anything. This was a really graceful opponent that decided to carry on playing, even though, even though the deck seemed to be stacked against them, especially towards the end there. They carried on playing till the bitter end, and then once they lost enough mana and had Leovold, uh, sent back to the command zone enough times they just decided to call it a day there and yeah that's fair enough we do have a bunch of cards in hand and we have plenty more means to deal with Leovold even if he does come down so hopefully you all enjoyed another praying session on Leovold Emissary of Trest this time it was with Damia Sage of Stone I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel thank you for watching